the killing of Osama bin Laden is a failure to me because the negative retroaction of that will be enormous. The amount of hatred and people that will die as a result of that. So the killing of one man never destroys a value system. It destroys that person. But the value system goes on. Racism, bigotry, stupidity are part of the problem. Stupidity means lack of information regarding certain types of problems. When you read in a book that revenge is sweet, and if that takes as a system, it hurts people. Therefore, all that type of literature has to go. To the extent that we raise our children with artificial values, that will produce harm in the future. You think, well, they're only children. I don't think it's that necessary. Well, war, guns, possession of guns are partly nurtured by our culture. And guns give people a sense of power, a false sense of power. Real sense of power is delivery of information that's relevant to people. Well, of course, you don't sense it right away. You don't feel a glorious feeling doing that. But really, it's a long-term investment. And all short-term investments may appear to solve problems, but they only perpetuate problems into the future. A major problem with the world's people today is they believe that human values and behavior and decisions are made within a human being. Actually, this is not the case. That's a major cause of most of the world's problems. It is the environment they're reared in. If you cannot understand that, think of the language you use and the values you have and the attitudes about a good old USA. If you brought up in Iran, the value system would be different. Your language would be different. Therefore, it is not within the human being to know the difference between what you would call operant behavior or useful behavior or useful values. All your values are inculcated by environment, the books you read, the motion pictures you see, the role models you have. Therefore, human beings are not, I repeat this, are not responsible for their values. They are learned. And if you don't understand that, you should become more familiar with the effects of environment on human behavior. The very fact that they used to burn witches in Salem, Massachusetts, might mean that within that area, most people were brought up with such a value system. The notions of heaven and hell come from books and other people. Your language comes from your environment. Possibly the difference between a Roman and a Greek would be the environment they're reared in. If you don't understand that, you need a lot of education, a lot of information, and you'll have to seek it. We have to seek information that's relevant to people, not information that's based upon opinion, folk ways, hand down values, or feelings of good and bad. All those feelings of good, bad, right, wrong are all learned. Everything is learned. If you still don't understand that, look back at the words you use and you'll find that they're words that you've picked up from your environment. An Englishman speaks with an English accent not because he's English, because he's been exposed to that environment and those sounds of words. An Australian speaks like an Australian because he's brought up in an environment that utilizes that dialogue. A northerner, a southerner speaks different than a northerner. And if you still don't understand that, that's the best I can do. We reflect our culture. Osama bin Laden is dead, but the value system that produced him is not. It's quite alive. And uh, that goes for the Nazis, the Ku Klux Klan, the White Citizens Council, the value system is still alive. What is needed is not assassinations, not murder, not killing, 
no armies or navies to solve problems. What is really needed is a change in our values. I believe in the Bible you'll find a section where Jesus Christ mentions, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. I don't know what the word sin means, but I do know this. Erroneous values can cause un unbelievable suffering amongst people. And we, our nation, like other nations, are mainly like children that do not have answers, that do not have solutions of problems, whereby many solutions are violent and they do not solve problems. What is really needed is a change in values, not the election of this governor or that governor. There's no change in values in that. By change in values, I mean living in accordance with the natural capacity, that is the caring capacity of the earth. And if we violate that, there are all kinds of problems. When you violate the laws of nature, which are really inviolable, they will produce other negative effects. We don't study what the negative retroaction will be on the assassination of Osama bin Laden, but we're building a catalog of problems up ahead. I think that the solution of problems take longer. Of course, a sane solution takes many years, and that is to arrive at a value system that supports nature, the earth, and all the people that live on this earth. If they all go off in different directions and evolve different value systems, there's got to be trouble. And you cannot solve problems by killing people, although most of you believe that revenge is sweet. It is only sweet to the naive and childlike attitudes whereby we feel good when we get rid of a certain person identified with a problem. That does not solve the problem. If you yourselves, as Americans, were brought up in that country where those values are dominant, you will support those values. It isn't killing people that solves problems. It's outgrowing values that no longer work. And this is what we have to identify. If you cannot identify the values that do not work, you cannot undo them. Only through education can we change human values. And what we have to do is approach nations and share with them some of our values, if we can. And if you don't know how to do that, you have to find the means for doing that. It is absolutely essential that we find the means of bridging the difference between nations. And the nearest thing that I know of that can solve those problems is to arrive at decisions rather than make them. Arriving at decisions meaning put all your decisions to test, see if they work. Use scientific scales of performance. And in that manner, we can probably arrive at closer agreements with nations. I believe that all nations need the same thing, clean air, clean water, arable land, and medical and health security, and access to food and the necessities of life. If we fail to work together, attempting to solve these problems, I feel the problems will continue in, in much more vicious ways because we're not touching or not addressing the actual manifestation of how these values come into being. And it's only through careful study, not feelings of revenge, careful study that will enable people to outgrow systems that are no longer relevant. What is needed is a value system that coincides with the nature of human need. Now, not only that, but humans are part of the environment. Therefore, the environment is part of human needs, whether we recognize it or not. Another part of human need is the differences in values. 
that people all have a multiplicity of values that differ from one another, there will be conflict. How do we go about selecting a value system that makes sense? And how do we go about presenting a value system to people who know nothing about such a value system? I think the best way to do it is demonstration with films. In films, we can show how a person feels a volcano is angry. We have to show those movies and the sincerity of a witch doctor talking about the solution. Then we have to show the sincerity of Romans treating Christians lions. Then we have to point out a group of people stoning a woman. And when Jesus comes in, he says, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. All of us are erroneous in our values due to the early part of our historical upbringing. We are given a set of values that do not work. Proof. We have war, recession, hunger, poverty, salvation, illness. And if our society were oriented toward the well-being of our fellow human beings, I, I cannot see these problems as being dominant. In a society where every man works for himself, individual incentive, working for oneself. If people work for oneself, there wouldn't be the electric light. There wouldn't be engines that power vehicles. There wouldn't be electrification and reservoirs and water purification. These are processes that help all people. And processes that help single people is a very primitive value system carried into this century, which is really not necessary. However, it appears that humans do not seem to change or improve their value system until there's utter failure of that value system. People trained in the sciences tend to pause a little bit before they accept an idea, a little more than the average person. They try to evaluate it and they figure, well, the man is using a scientific method, he probably draws the correct conclusions. You know, when you have faith in somebody, believe in somebody, a scientist doesn't believe in anything, he either accepts, rejects, or holds in abeyance. That is, does not make a judgment until verifiable evidence is produced. So killing people is not the solution to any problem at all. War is a maximum expression of ignorance. A good and bad is part of a value system. It has nothing to do with something coming from the inside of a human being. It appears that all evidence shows that intuition does not and is not based upon innermost feelings. It's not based upon evidence. It's based upon uh, being exposed to erroneous value systems. And where do you start? Most values, most human values are erroneous. Except when it comes to mathematics, physics, chemistry, they are more appropriate. So I would say if you become familiar with particular books, literature that we have on our website, it may help you.